Welcome to the third edition of 55 new Java 7 features that you probably didn't hear about. In this edition, we in the uh, third edition that we are going to cover is uh, we'll deal primarily with the concurrency APIs that came in in Java 7. So to give you a background a little bit on the Java concurrency history, Java was actually designed uh, from the very ground up to support concurrent programming with basic concurrency support in the Java programming language and its Java class libraries. Since version 5.0, Doug Lee kind of went off and did some work, and the Java platform has also concluded some very high-level concurrency APIs that came in with JSR 166. Java SE 7 includes updates to the concurrency APIs that were first introduced in Java SE 5. This is an update to an update. Uh, the original utilities were defined in JSR 166. This was extended in JSR 166X, which was in Java SE 6 and extended further through uh, JSR 166Y, Java SE 7. And this is the first introduction of the uh, fork join framework in Java SE 7. So let's take a look first at the concurrency APIs and, and take a look at phasers. So uh, a phaser, the phaser, which is a reusable syn uh, synchronization barrier, is very similar in functionality to the uh, the cyclic barrier and the countdown latch, but it supports uh, much more flexible usage. Uh, the phaser expands on, the, on, on that cyclical barrier, as we said, by allowing several additional new features. More flexible uh, task support, cyclic barrier allows a single uh, synchronization action to be registered, but phaser allows more flexible and dynamic action. It allows party count to change over time. Fa uh, phasers, uh, phases are numbered and uh, threads to know the phase count are available to you. Termination, uh, explicit support for a termination phase itself, and also tiered uh, trees of phases. Uh, phasers, I should say. Uh, concurrency APIs, uh, JSR 166Y, transfer queue. So the transfer queue is a, uh, is a blocking queue in which producers may wait for consumers to receive elements. A transfer queue may be useful, for example, in uh, message, passaging, uh, messi uh, message passing applications to which producers sometimes, using method transfer, uh, wait uh, for the recipient of elements by consumers invoking take or pull, while at other times uh, in queue in, in elements uh, via method put without waiting for receipt. Now, non-blocking and timeout versions of try transfer are also available here. Now, transfer queue may be queried via has waiting consumer whether there are any threads waiting for items, uh, which is a converse analogy to a peak operation. Like other blocking queues, a transfer queue may be capacity bound. If so, an attempt to transfer operations may initially block waiting for available space. So fork join framework, which is uh, one of the major pieces here, and uh, pools. So uh, new in Java 7e release, the fork join framework is an implementation of executor service interface that helps you take advantage of multiple processors. It's designed to work. Uh, it's, it's designed for work that can be broken into smaller pieces recursively. The goal is to use all of the available processing power to enhance your performance of your, of your application. Now, uh, the center of the fork join framework is a fork join pool class. And it's an extension of the abstract extension service. Fork join pool implements the core work uh, stealing algorithm and creates a pool of worker threads to ex execute on uh, fork, join pa uh, uh, fork join tasks. Now the tasks themselves, the fork join task is a task that performs a segmented segment of the work which is wrapped as a fork join task subclass. Typically this is either one of the more specialized tasks, either a recursive task uh, or, or one which is a uh, recursive action. So it depends on what you're looking for. Now an example that we show down below here, you look at the fork join pool. This is kind of how you would just kind of begin your execution of everything uh, when you're trying to use a fork join framework. Taking a look at the compute section here. So these are a couple of examples of how you would implement a recursive action. 
or a recursive tax. Notice how one of these, the uh, recursive action, doesn't return a value. It's just a recursive action that you will do over and over again. Whereas a recursive tax is, is something that you would do when you want to return a value. Maybe you're joining two things together and, and you're going off and, and you're splitting them up and and uh, you want to fork them, and then you want to join them when you return. And this is especially uh, effective when you're trying to go down and, and you're splitting your task up into smaller, smaller, smaller tasks until you get something to, to a smaller case there. But again, two examples here. Uh, it just depends on which example you want to be able to use. Next piece is uh, concurrent random numbers. And uh, for concurrent access, using thread locale random instead of the math random results in less contention and ultimately better performance. All you really need to do here is call thread local random current and then call one of the methods to retrieve a random number. Now you can see some of the examples that we have in here. Uh, you would just pass, maybe you want a parameter if you were getting the next int of uh, a 4 through 77. So you can, you can define what you want, which set of random numbers you're really looking for. When it comes to uh, the current uh, concurrent linked DQ, this is really an appropriate choice when uh, many of the threads will share uh, access to a common collection. So if you've got a, a set of collections here, you want to be able to use concurrent linked DQ class. Now concurrent insertions and removal and access operations uh, execute safely across multiple threads. Key part here, though, is, is that iterators are weakly consistent. So uh, returning elements reflecting the state of the DQ at some point or at at or at, uh, at or since the creation of the iterator. If you're looking for more information on concurrency, uh, you can take a look at uh, Doug Lee's website, uh, his concurrency JSR 166 interest site. Also, if you're looking for more information about the fork join framework, uh, Doug has a pointer there for the uh, fork join PDF that he put together. A, 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 a white sheet that he's put together on that. Also, the concurrency uh, tutorial is available on uh, the OTN Developer Networks. And then finally, uh, Doug wrote a book. It's in its second edition. The first edition came out in 1999 on concurrent programming in Java, design principles and patterns. And then Brian Getz's book on Java concurrency and practice with D Brian Getz, Doug Lee, and a host of other uh, authors as well. So this is, it concludes what we do for the third edition of the Java 7 features that you probably don't know about. When we get to the next edition, we will be looking at uh, some additional features. We'll be looking at some additional features around uh, class loading, Unicode changes, and uh, swing changes or GUI changes that came in.